First up, Forest Guide. Druid Rare, 4 mana 1 6. At the end of your turn, both players draw a card. Compare this card to Mogusham Warden. Worse health and a lack of taunt makes it worse, and the effect is seemingly balanced between both players. I say seemingly because it's actually better for. your opponent. Cards like Cold Light Oracle are strong by giving you cards on your turn, when you can still play them. The cards drawn here can't be played until the player's next turn, which for your opponent is right then and for you is, well, later. So bad stats, bad effect, garbage card, right? Well, no. In Wild, decks such as Mildruid do exist, and in that format cards like Cold Light Oracle will still be valuable. This card can be comparable to Grove Tender then, except with the potential to repeat the effect. So this card is terrible unless it's in the right deck. Pity that deck probably can't exist in Standard. Also Blizzard, I'd like to note that this is the second terrible card that synergizes with Whispering Woods. If this deck archetype doesn't work, you're on my naughty list for getting rid of Cold Light Oracle. Secondly, WANTED! <coughs> <coughs> Sorry guys. Secondly, WANTED. Rogue Epic, 4 mana spell, deal 3 damage to a minion. If that kills it, add a coin to your hand. The flavor of this card is awesome, but we're not here for that. This card is either a 4 mana deal 3 damage, quite terrible, or it additionally adds a coin to your hand. The coin is a powerful tool in Rogue, but frankly it isn't as powerful as a card draw, if comparing this to a card like Mortal Coil. We could discuss the particulars of how the coin can be a valuable resource for Rogue, but the fact is that this card is too lacking to be worth it considering that a 3 damage effect is usually worth a 2 mana card, and this is a 4 mana card. Sorry Rogue. Thirdly, Scale Worm. Neutral Rare, 4 mana 4 4 Beast. Battle Cry, if you are holding a dragon, gain plus 1 attack, and rush. Huh! <laughs> there might be hope for the Pilot Murloc Dragon Beast deck yet. A 4 mana 5 4 Rush minion is pretty good. Perhaps slightly worse than Dustbreaker. It not being a dragon makes it comparable to Blackwing Technician, in that this card does not provide a trigger for other synergy cards. This card does become rather unstable after it rushes an opponent, so its tempo swing abilities are less than that of Blackwing Corruptor. Then again, one less mana, so that's to be expected. More notably, this card benefits from dragons and gives benefit to beast synergies, meaning that it fits well in a deck that can use both of those. Will that deck ever exist, with the Menagerie minions and the Nightmare Amalgam to help out? Who knows, but Hearthstone player can dream. Next, Vex Crow. Mage common, 4 mana 3 3. Whenever you cast a spell, summon a random 2 cost minion. A random 2 cost minion is, on average, worth about 2 mana, since battle cry effects are not activated, and special effects sometimes do not synergize well with your deck. So, hypothetically, this card only needs to be activated twice to be worth it. But before you place this into every aggro, tempo, and arena deck ever, we need to focus on the weakness, flexibility. This card requires 4 mana, plus the ability to cast other spells. Comparing to Flame Waker, Vex Crow is harder to play, less stable on the field because it has one less health, and summons minions rather than destroying minions. It's also slightly more prone to creating Doomsayers, which can quickly end any progress that you made. In the end, these strengths and weaknesses balance out. If you build a deck distinctly for this effect to be activated, this card can be strong, but not invincible. So this card is decent, if you're decent enough to know how to play it. Up next, Blackwalled Pixie. Neutral common, 3 mana 3 4, Battle Cry, refresh your hero power. A hero power is rarely the optimal play, instead being a bonus for when you have 2 mana you can't spend anywhere else. This card is therefore not that powerful in most decks, only being of use when you have 4 mana that you don't want to spend anywhere else. Of course this card does have relevance in decks where your hero power is buffed, such as with the Death Knight or with Baku. Sorry again, this card is odd costed. For example, refreshing the 4 horsemen or siphon life would both be particularly powerful plays, so the four horsemen may still need more pieces for this card to work. So, if used with another card, this card can be quite decent, considering the extent that hero powers can be manipulated these days. Finally, we have Clockwork Automaton. Let's try that again. Finally, we have Clockwork Automaton. Fuck. Automaton. Automaton. Finally, we have Clockwork Automaton. Neutral common. 5 mana 4 4 mech, double the damage and healing of your hero power. Well, now Velen feels very irrelevant, not to mention I now understand even more why Blizzard nerfed Raza. It's worth knowing that despite this being a neutral card, only 3 classes have hero powers that benefit, 5 if you consider Death Knights. However, new hero cards could be released that benefit greatly from this card, so we'll have to see. 
In the 10 cases we have for this card already, it's usually pretty lacking. Notable exceptions include a buffed priest healing themselves for 8, or Blood Reaver Gul'dan dealing 6 damage and healing himself for 12. At least that's how I think it works. However, even those exceptional cases, you need to play this 5 mana 4 4, which is naturally lacking. And per usual, even with these buffed hero powers, you need to go through the effort of buffing them. So, when will this card be used? Right before a powerful combo, like Velen was used before, and only when your hero power is already buffed. Otherwise, this card is not worth the time, nor the energy. Continuing onwards, we have Coffin Crasher. Priest Rare, 6 mana 6 5, Death Rattle, summon a Death Rattle minion from your hand. Straightforward enough, this card's death rattle gives a mana boost equal to the cost of the card in your hand, but demands that you have both this card in play and a death rattle card in hand. Similar effects from cards like Void Collar have existed, and proved to be very strong when the associated card was also very strong. While this card costs more and is therefore less flexible, it can be used in a similar manner if a strong enough death rattle comes along, making this card decent. Up next, Darius Crowley. Warrior Legendary, 5 mana 4-4, four, four, Rush, Whenever this attacks and kills a minion, gain plus 2 plus 2. This card is interesting because the rush effect pretty much guarantees the secondary effect, so this card can practically be viewed as a 5 mana 6-6 six, six with rush, except its rush target needs to have 4 or less health. That altogether isn't that bad since the flexibility boost and limit even out to make this card a fair 5 mana 6-6. Six, six. However, this card paints a picture of being able to boost its power multiple times over a game. This is sadly impractical. This card will continue to lose health unless it attacks minions with 2 or less attack. And do you really need to be running your 6-2 minion into a 1-1 minion to transform it into an 8-3 minion? So this card does not actually get much stronger past that first strike. As much as I would like to say that this card is decent, I think it's just a little too lacking to be of much use, considering the impracticality of a high value play. Finally, we have Emeris. Hunter Legendary, 10 mana 8-8. Battlecry, double the attack and health of all minions in your hand. Wow, this card is supporting both of my fever dreams, the Control Hunter and the Pirate Murloc Dragon Beast deck. Putting aside the card's dragon status, let's examine the Battlecry. Activating this Battlecry is horrifying if you have a full hand, doubling the power of all the cards in that hand. Think about it, a Tundra Rhino becomes a 5 mana 410, and that's one of the weaker cards. 2 mana 6 4 Raptors, a King Crush with 16 attack. Assuming a Control Hunter deck can exist, this card would be right at home in it. Compared to Ysera, another high cost play meant to win games. The difference is, historically, Ysera was a you need to kill this now or I'm going to win card. Emeris is a you need to win the game right now or I'm going to win card. However, the limit with this card, like many others in Hunter, is that it doesn't fit an existing Hunter archetype. Kind of like Gazrilla, strong cards need support to be able to work. This card requires support, something that Hunter may not be able to provide, which means it's only decent if played correctly. And whether or not the deck gets enough pieces in Wild to fit in Pirates and Murlocs, we'll have to see for that as well. 